hell of a long. Figured I'd try and do something here before I call it an evening. But I normally don't get a chance to do something to the extent where you can, like, read a little story. And uh, I get a kick out of, like, stuff like this weird New Jersey. If you're into the weird or if you're into, like, the, you know, strange stories and stuff like this, this is pretty cool. Um, been uh, addicted to this for some time since most of the stores carried us. I don't have to make the orders, but um, I don't know if you're from Jersey and some of you may be. Um, and hopefully I'm not doing anything wrong uh, by this. It's just the fact that, again, it's one of those... Let me pause this for a sec. Okay, so I'm going to continue. And I figured I'd touch on something because this is in the recent number 49 of Weird New Jersey uh, for October 2017 through May 2018. They do it by bi yearly or something to that effect. So this is about the Headless Horseman of Rivervale. Rivervale's here in New Jersey off of the Garden State Parkway. Um, you could probably also get it off of 17. Now what you're seeing here is supposed to be a ghostly photo. And that is supposed to be the horse. And this is supposed to be the rider. And this has to do with history. The history of back in the day when we were fighting the British. So, it's stated, all right, that in a bullock and wooded township of Rivervale, many residents remain unfamiliar with the gruesome, violent de details of a British ambush of the Continental Cavalry back in that time. Uh, the, the troops led by the youthful patriot Colonel George Baylor. During the Revolutionary War, New Jersey served as a central center stage throughout a war, a distinction that was tragically played out in what today would be part of Rivervale during the early hours of September 28th of 1778. What became known as the Baylor Massacre took place when a superior force of British soldiers under the command of Major General Charles Gray learned that the enconced in private homes and barns in the Hackensack River area uh, in a 1 a.m. raid, the British caught the unsuspecting dragoons completely by surprise. According to the historian Edmund A. Muldraki, 11 were killed moments after the attack began. Baylor and the other fellow officers were repeatedly bayoneted while they sought refuge in the chimney above the fireplace. The two officers would later die of these wounds suffered by the British assault, which inflicted some 50 casualties, according to the township historical accounts. I'm not reading this directly as is. I'm ad-libbing a few things here and there, um, which makes it easier for me to read. Um, only one British soldier was reportedly killed. It was on Easter Sunday of this year, that lifelong resident Gail Coffin and her cousin happened to be in, in Karen Smith of New York visited this unassuming Baylor Massacre Park and took photographs. The photographs I showed you. Or one I showed you. Sorry. After enjoying a lovely Easter dinner at our aunt's home in Norwood, I suggest we go to Baylor Park, says Coffin. The sun was starting to set. It was gorgeous out, to be honest. My cousin and I are into this sort of thing. We figured we had nothing to lose. In addition to taking the cell phone photos, two attempted to summon the spirits of any dragoons who died that night nearly 250 years ago. I don't think some people would do that, folks. That's like asking for something. And I'm not going to touch on that. Just not wise. Anyway, I figured we had nothing to lose, she said. In addition to taking the cell phone photos, the two had attempted to summon spirits of any dragoons who died that night 250 years ago, but with no apparent results. It was until she got a message from Smith later that evening 
the coffin realized the pair had indeed captured the attention of a otherworldly nature. No sooner did the they she downloaded the attachment, recalls Coffin, she saw the apparition immediately. Looking at Smith's photo, one can hardly fail to notice what appears to be the ghostly skeleton of a man on the back of an eerie skeletal horse. Looking at Smith's photo, one can hardly fail to notice what appears to be that. And I just said that. Sorry about that. My response was simply, holy beep, exclaims Coffin. It was unbelievable, immediately texted Karen back. It was just an amazing picture. A Virginian Baylor served as George Washington's aide de camp and later made the name for himself in the Battle of Trenton in 1776 writes Muldrocki. The Revolutionary War in Bergen County. In his actions he, in the field earned him the privilege of taking command of a newly formed 3rd Continental Light Dragoons, a cavalry unit often charged with scouting, communication, reconnaissance missions, which is why they were attacked. In 1967, an archaeological dig unearthed the skeletal remains of six of Baylor's men who had hastily interred and the disused vats of a colonial tanning enterprise. Home movies and the dig are available on YouTube. I will look that up and see if I can get to that and link it. So that this way you don't have to do the digging. And which is again a viewing on YouTube. Five years later, the Bergen County Freeholders voted to establish a county park on the site under the auspices of the Burton County Parks Commission. In 1974, the remains of the six dragoons were reinterred at the new Baylor Massacre Park, according to Madraki. If I meet someone who says they live in the houses in the area of Baylor Park, I always ask them if they have ever had any kind of paranormal activity, says Coffin. Surprisingly, they always ask why. When I tell them, a little bit about the area's history, most of them had no idea. And that's just a sample of what you'll find in this magazine. Um, if you were to, you could find them online. If you don't know about them, they've also made a book called Weird U.S. Um, and there may be other areas or other tales of other stories uh, could be closer to home for you. Um, you might want to look into this. So if you have an interest in this kind of thing, or since it's around Halloween now, um, and you enjoy these very uh, type of stories, or you want to tell a good campfire tale, I suggest you look into the well-done reports and stuff that defy curiosity, um, just strange or weird, and uh, check them out. Um, if you, uh, are truly, you know, looking to be entertained, amused, maybe even some of you might find this a good laugh. Um, you know, as far as it goes, it's good entertainment reading and good job. Um, they had a show on for a while. You'll find them also on YouTube. And, uh, as far as things are concerned, uh, you know, have at it. Uh, I intend to, from time to time, put stuff up that, uh, interest me and stuff like this and I have no problems with others who might have uh, their own and they want to do that I'd be more than happy to share um, you know what is your interests when it comes down to this time of the year I like ghost stories I like mysteries I like uh, stuff that has to do with uh, the supernatural besides the fact that uh, uh, things that just don't easily get put away. You know, things that just can't easily be explained. Um, things that just defy all odds and shouldn't exist, but yet they do. Um, why? You know, so as far as it goes, uh, you know, that's it. Um, looking to get back into doing this from time to time. And... Uh, I'm going to look up some campfire stories of my own. And you have a happy Halloween, a safe one, and God bless. Good day.